Hello there, it's Sandy Allnock. Happy Father's Day. I'm going to do a Father's Day page and I wanted a background for it. And I saw somebody on Instagram in a little video and I wish I had written down who she was or saved her video. She was a fine artist and she did these really cool patterns using a squeegee and paint. I mean, these were like massive canvases and things that she did. And I thought, we could probably do that really small in our Bibles. So I got out some Tomo River paper and my acrylics. And I have a terrible selection of acrylic colors, only the basics. And I didn't really want these kind of colors, but I decided to practice with them anyway. And I found that if you hold the credit card vertically and really smash it to the paper, you get really thin coverage. But if you lay it down almost parallel, you can get really thick coverage and deposit all that paint real quickly on the surface so you get thicker coverage. It takes a really long time for thicker coverage to dry, but you can certainly do that with acrylic paints. And it doesn't matter what brand, all brands should probably work about the same. I kind of had to split in the middle because I ran out of paint. I was trying to use up the leftover paint from that first one. And I wanted to see if I did a double blob of color at the top, could I make it all the way down to the bottom of the page? And yes, indeed I could. It gets a little broken up as you start running out of paint. So you may have to practice a little bit to figure out exactly how much paint to put on before you spread it around. Now this is not a new technique invented by me at all. I just wanna tell you that people have been doing the credit card with the paint for a long time. I have several videos with it, but I hadn't really thought about doing it as just lines. And this woman did arcs. So they were almost like rainbows, but she did them in very soft colors. Hers were in like soft greens and soft browns and very romantic and beautiful. And they weren't rainbowy, but I don't have any soft colors like that. So I decided to take the colors that I do have and just mix them using a little plastic palette knife with white paint so that I could get lighter colors. And then I could draw over top of it because those really strong, bright colors, it's going to be really hard to see anything if I was going to draw anything on it. So I made almost cotton candy kind of paint colors and then spread them on the paper and decided I would, I would give that a shot. Now, what I have discovered, if you wanna to try to get a little bit of blending on either side is to spread each of the colors into each other. So the yellow crosses into the blues lane and the pink will cross into the yellow and then you'll get a little softer line in between them. If you're just splooging out the paint on the edge straight from the tube, just make them touch. And that will usually give you a little bit of a decent line in between them. Well, I had I didn't have a squeegee like that lady did, but I had a piece of scrap cardboard. <laughs> I decided to use that. Necessity is the mother of invention and found that it worked. It was really cool. I made a whole bunch of pages of this and I wanna do like a whole bunch of projects now with it because now I've got all these papers that I can use for backgrounds for all kinds of things. Uh, more journaling pages or just make cards with them, make bookmarks with them, all different kinds of fun stuff. You could trim them horizontally so you get all three colors on each bookmark. That would be kind of nice. And eventually I ran out of color that was left over on my cardboard, but I tried to smoosh as much of it as I could out onto the paper to try to complete this third one. So three squeegee-ish things from one section of paint that I had mixed. So then I started trying to figure out what I was gonna put on this. And the video is more about the painting, but I'll show you a little bit of what I did here. I tried writing the words that I wanted to put on my page and it just came out really badly. <laughs> like I hadn't planned it out and I ruined one of the sheets of paper, but I ruined it just in one section. So I decided to tear one of the other sections across that and, and just take a, a slice of it and copy some text that I wrote out in my computer. I typed it out and put it in the kinds of fonts that I wanted so I could get the letter spacing right because I am terrible at that. And this really helps me. And the light box that I have is a nice small one that I keep in the studio. They have all different kinds of sizes, but if you have trouble tracing things, this is a big help. But you can also do that against a window, just on a sunny day. You can tape your stuff up to the window and trace it that way and not have to spend any money on getting a, a light box. And I'm just using a Micron pen for the lettering and tracing over it as best I can. I did end up having to do a little cleanup once I turned the lights back on, but 
this worked pretty well otherwise. And what these lyrics are, these words that I've put on here, they're lyrics to a song. And I guess two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, I was really blessed by going to church and hearing this song. And yes, I said going to church, went in the building, and I just wept, absolutely wept in the presence of the Lord. And when we were singing this song, it, I'll put a link to the video on YouTube if you want to go listen to it. The words of it are so powerful, and they speak to me and where my heart is with the Lord. And, it, you know, it talks about shame not being welcome in the Father's house and in His presence. Just all these things are listed for what has to flee when it, when the father is present. So I decided to draw out kind of some boxes and make it look a little bit architectural since we're talking about the father's house and just started writing in some of the, the rooms, the things that the father takes care of, like what happens when the father is present, when he is there, all the different things that are listed in that song. I just wrote them in here and I put little boxes around there. Just, doodled boxes. Nothing has, as you can see, a ruler applied to it. So it was very, very loose. But the point was to get more of these lyrics onto this page because it really is a powerful song talking about the kinds of things that we can expect when we're in God's presence. So here's a little close up of the page. And the phrase, my weakness is a canvas for your strength, might end up being at some point a page of its own because it's such a beautiful lyric and conjures up a lot of wonderful mental and artistic and visual images for me. So there's my finished page and I hope you all have a wonderful Father's Day and I will see you again next week with another Bible journaling video. Be blessed and I'll see you in a week. Bye-bye.